What's up guys, Chris schwartz Emerson here from schwartz Emerson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at this announcement bar animation effect, where as we scroll down the page, the announcement bar animates out of frame. The other day, someone sent me this site because they wanted me to style my Mega Menu plugin like this Twilio dropdown here. And when I was reviewing the site, I noticed this really cool effect that I wanna talk about in today's video, which is that this top header bar here, it animates out of view when you scroll down the page. And this is a really good user experience because this is information that's not critical as you scroll down the page, and it's just extra space that would be taken up if it didn't animate out of view. So imagine how thick the header would be, it would cover up that much more content scrolling down the page. And this immediately reminded me of an announcement bar in Squarespace. You don't really need the announcement bar to also scroll down the page when you have a fixed header. Ideally, it would animate out of frame, uh, and only the navigation, the important stuff, would be visible. So that's what we're going to tackle in today's video. So the first thing that um, I knew I needed to do was, I knew that there's a class added to the header when you scroll down the page, because somehow the background color of the header is going from transparent to black. So there, there must be a class being added that triggers that style change. So if we right click on the header and click inspect, that'll bring up the Chrome tools. I'm just gonna scroll all the way up until we just see the header element. And here we can, we know it's the header element because it has an element type of header, has an ID of header. And as we hover over this element, we can see everything in the header is highlighted. So as I scroll down the page, you can see there is a class being added and the class is called shrink. So as we're at the top of the page, the shrink class goes away. And as you scroll down, it gets added. So what I'm gonna do is, when the shrink class is added to the header, I'm then going to target the announcement bar, which is inside of the header, and I'm going to give it a negative margin top that's equal to the height of the announcement bar. So down here we can see the announcement bar is 40.179 pixels tall. So I'll just call that 41 pixels tall. So when that shrink class is added to the header, we're gonna give the announcement bar a negative margin top equal to its height, so 41 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm gonna show you there are some things that we need to take into account. So it's not as straightforward as I'm initially making it, but I think uh, you'll see what I mean when we get started. So let's go ahead and target this header by its ID of header. So we target IDs with a hashtag in CSS. And when the header gets a class of shrink added to it, we then wanna target the announcement bar inside of it. So I'll just take this SQS announcement bar drop zone class, and we'll see that this is not the correct class in a little bit, but first I'm gonna give it a, a margin top of negative 41 pixels, the height of the announcement bar. So now you can see as it, that class gets added, then our announcement bar is shifting up, but it's not animating, it's just automatically jumping out of the frame. So what we need to do is we need to give the announcement bar a transition so that it animates smoothly out of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this information here and I'll paste it up top. And we need to add the transition to the original state basically. Um, we need to add it to the announcement bar when it doesn't have the shrink class added to it. So here I'm going to, my property is gonna be transition and we're gonna transition the margin top over 0.3 seconds and we'll give it a ease in out. And the reason that I'm choosing ease in out for the transition easing is because I know that's what Squarespace uses for the background color. So for here, when they're transitioning the background color, they're doing it for the background over 140 milliseconds and they're using the ease in out. So I'm just gonna sort of mimic those properties although I wanna use 0.3 seconds instead of 140 milliseconds because I wanted to fade out a little more slowly than that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense on why I'm making the decisions that I'm making so far. Uh, so there we go, ease in out. And now we can see, sweet. So it animates nicely out of frame. Awesome. Okay, so the next thing that we need to talk about is what happens if someone closes the announcement bar? So if someone closes the X, it still leaves that gap up there. So 
This is not the correct class to target, this SQS announcement bar drop zone class, uh, because it we run into this problem where we still have a gap if someone clicks that X. Now, one thing we could do is we could just hide the close button, and that would solve that problem. No one would ever be able to click that X. But I we can design this in a in a better way, one that accommodates someone wanting to close the announcement bar. So we might as well build it in the best way possible. So instead of using this SQS announcement bar drop zone class, which is up here, this container, uh, if we go down two steps to this inner container here, we can see that a class gets added when that X is clicked of SQS announcement bar hidden, and it gets a display of none. So if we're animating this element, as soon as the X gets clicked, the negative margin doesn't matter because that element is being hidden anyway. So this would be a better class, a better element to target uh, because it's the actual element that's being hidden or not hidden. This container up here is going to be there no matter what, whether the stuff inside it gets hidden or not. So this, in fact, is a better option to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to target the SQS announcement bar itself instead of this drop zone, except we don't want this negative margin to apply. So we're going to add a not selector. So we're going to target this element, but not when it has this class of SQS announcement bar hidden. So as soon as we add this in, you'll see that gap uh, should close. And let me just go ahead and give it a reload of the frame. Sometimes that can cause things to be a little wonky. OK, so now if we go back to the marketing tab, uh, we can trigger the announcement bar again. So now it should, uh, it pops out of view. And if we close the X, the header now jumps back up to the top. Cool. So my CSS was correct. I just needed to refresh uh, and let that Squarespace kind of work itself out there. Uh, OK, cool. So let me go ahead and bring back the announcement bar by going to the announcement bar tab. It just brings it back when you've clicked the X. So we'll go back to the custom CSS. And now I just need to change this so my transition is applying to the new element, which is just SQS announcement bar. Now you can see it animates nicely out of frame. And again, it's totally accommodating of someone clicking the close button. The header jumps back up and we don't have that extra space. So that's why this is the more correct class to use. It was working before, but this is a better, um, more accommodating user experience. Now, I do want to say sometimes you might want to hide the close button on the announcement bar. So we can go over that CSS too. Um, so if I go to design custom CSS uh, to hide this close button so, so no one can ever close the announcement bar, you can just target this SQS announcement bar close class and then give it a display of none. So we'll go display none. Uh, and now no one can ever click that button. So the announcement bar will always be there. All right, that's it for this video. I'm going to be adding this snippet to my new course, CSS Toolbox. It's a giant library of 7.1 specific CSS snippets that you can just copy and paste and make your website look that much cooler. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description below. Consider subscribing to my channel if you found this helpful and want to get more videos like this in the future. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.